What's up guys, Steve Scruss here, and this is part two of your guide to flashing not fast enough silverware to your flight controller. Um, so now in the first video I showed you all the stuff you're going to need, the hardware, the software. Um, we, we installed them, and in this video... We're actually going to go ahead and set up our flight controllers to be plugged into your USB port so we can actually get to flashing the firmware to our flight controllers. Now, um, first off, what you're going to need to do is if you're not running a, a uh, 1S LiPo on your flight controller, you can just go ahead and solder up a wire to your voltage plus and in this tutorial I will be using the BO3 flight controller um, there's going to be links in the description to that controller and also the beta FPV light controller you're going to go ahead and you know uh, solder that up now if you want to make a harness I have flashed a picture up on the screen right now uh, just like mine it's great it comes in handy and you know anytime I need to make changes I just go ahead and plug it in plug in my 1S LiPo straight into the computer and boom right to the board you'll see how that works in a second you can go ahead and make one of these uh, I, I'm not sure it's it's a three pin you've got all that stuff plugged in make sure you match up the um, SWDIO SCLK, SWCLK, and ground with the pins on your um, SD Link V2. Now, these are going to be the pins on the bottom. Here's another picture to help you. Okay, these are going to be the pins on the bottom. I have a fourth one plugged in because I am running 3V3 volts from this SD Link V2. If you're running a 1S LiPo, I repeat, you do not have to run. 3v3 from your SD Link V2. If you're not running a 1S LiPo, then go ahead and plug it into 3v3. Don't plug it into 5 volts. I don't know what's going to happen. Just use 3v3. The board doesn't need any more than 3.3 volts. Open up the SD Link utility first. Let's, just, let's make this window all the way. And you can go ahead and plug your SD Link V2 into your USB port. Now because I've had mine plugged in before you're not going to see the little thing that pops up says it's installing driver right now. If this is your first time doing it you should get that. It should be successful. Had no problems. I forgot to delete the driver for the uh, SD Link V2 so my bad but that's straightforward enough. Your computer handles all that. Target, connect, now, cannot read memory. Disable readout protection and retry. So that basically means you can't flash anything to this board because it's locked. Now to unlock the board, go to target, option bytes, switch level one to level zero, hit apply, boom, we're good to go. Now you can use this program to go ahead and erase the uh, the board, it'll do a full chip erase, everything will be clean, fresh, ready for silverware. Or you can even do that in the Keel program. But I did it here, so let's just keep it simple. Go ahead and hit OK. Alright, it's it's erased. You're good to go. Your memory is open. Um, you can flash whatever firmware that's compatible with this board to this board. And that's all you need the utility for. Now you close that out. Go ahead and open Keel and unplug your board. We're gonna let me see if I can get this window to pop up. That was giving me problems the first time a couple months ago when I tried Silverware. Full screen. Go ahead and plug your SD Link V2 in. Let's see. Oh, I need to actually load Silverware onto here first. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your Silverware folder, wherever you have it, it's going to be the NFE Silverware Master. Come down to Silverware, and now you see the little icon on the Silverware program. 
double click that it's going to open a second window I should close that window um, this okay there it is so missing device information this reads your SD link v2 and it's telling you you need to install this pack in order to have your SD link v2 readable by this program so you hit install it's gonna do its thing you're done um, it's actually installing it right down here downloading it from their website doing all that stuff in the status bar you can go ahead and uh, oh I guess you can't all right let's just wait let's wait for it it's almost done it's gonna be one of those times where it's stuck at 79 and then it says failed okay looks like we're done now all right so here you go this is uh, I should probably close this normally it opens like this and what you would do is you scroll down on the side here you look for config.h and you double click on it it opens up so first off we're not running um, well you can just go ahead and read these to define something you need to remove these two forward slashes now as you can see alien whoop zero is defined but we're not using an alien whoop zero unless you are if you're using an alien whoop zero you can leave that defined but we're using the b whoop now if you have um, a beta fpv light flight controller you would still use b whoop because as you see here all these flight controllers fall under b whoop if you're using an eachin 011 eachin 011 if you're using one of those all-in-one frame and boards, it's this guy. I haven't tried one of those. They look pretty cool, but I'm scared of breaking it. All right, so we're going to undefine alien whoop. We're going to define B whoop. Um, I did mess with mine, but I can't remember what it is. Now, secondly, if you have a Tyrannus, you can undefine stick deadband because, you know, we can calibrate our sticks and trim them however we need however we need be if you're using a toy flight controller then this might help you but if you're using a tyrannus or whatever if it's a high-end transmitter just go ahead and undefine that um, we're not using sbus because this b whoop flight controller and also the beta fpv flight controller they run under the Beiyang protocol and Pretty sure it's this guy right here. Telemetry auto. Uh, I actually have my settings open right here. So, yep. That's it. I'll just show you mine. Um, now, right under here, we have if you're using a stock, tran uh, stock transmitter, like the toy transmitter, go ahead and define that. If you're using a Devo flight controller or I believe that's the firmware. I'm not sure. But if you're using the multi-module that you plug into the back of your Tyrannus, you're going to define use multi. And now we get into the section where you can set up a channel for arming. You can set up a channel for a level mode, race mode, horizon, whatever you need be. But I actually have my channel set to default channel 5 um, I do swap between level mode and well it's not horizon because I don't use horizon it's level mode and air mode which uh, oh air mode is just stock there's no settings for that but if you want level mode on you would have to put it on a channel and flip the switch for it and if you want air mode, you could just flip back and you're in full acro mode. Um, what else did I change? Now, strangely enough, the configuration of the motors for uh, this firmware, it's with the props blowing outward. So normally, where you would have your red and blue wires as clockwise which is the first which is the top 
left motor on your tiny loop, it's actually going to be the counterclockwise. So it's counterclockwise, um, and then you go over to the right. It's I'll just just I'll flash a picture up instead of trying to explain this, but I there's actually a part in here that allows you to somewhat to, here it is inverted yaw pad. Um, I undefined this and the motors still spin the exact same way. So not too sure. I just did the props out configuration because why not? It's not hurting my quad in any way. So why not? Uh, the filtering right here. If you're good at tweaking filtering settings for a tiny loop, then you know you can mess with that. I had strong filtering on. Felt like I was getting some felt like it was being over filtered, so I just swapped down to weak filtering and everything flies great. You know, main things are you set what flight control you're using, which is going to be just gonna page up. Set what flight control, which is gonna be B loop uh, respectively, whichever one it is. And then as you fly, you know, and if you have certain rates that you like, you can go ahead and put those right into here. You know, you're, you have your expo for each of these for acro mode and angle mode. You can go ahead and swap those in, get your stuff set up. Um, you have your rates up here. Now these are by degrees. So if you have a certain, if you don't know that, you can just pop open beta flight, plug in one of your tiny loops. And you know, if you want it to fly exactly like beta flight settings, you can just set the degrees to whatever it may be in here. Make sure you have the right protocol, which is Bay Yang for the flight controller that I'm using for the demonstration in this video. Uh, your transmitter type, make sure that's right. Then you set up your channels. If you want them all, put them all on a channel. If you only want arming on a channel and level mode on a channel like I have, just do it inside your transmitter and you can I mean you can change this as you need but why just put it on channel 5 and channel 6 it makes life easy and now that you've done all that you base all you need to do is you just click load you click load and boom you're done it's on your flight controller there's nothing more you need to do if you get any error messages that it cannot read your flight controller that is because you did not install the driver pack that this or whatever pack this thing needs to read your ST Link V2. But you know, once you hit load, you should see that bar right down there and you're good to go. You, know, you can even go up to flash, you hit download. If you want to erase your Okay. That was that was pretty fast. Yeah, if you want to erase your board here, you can just hit erase and that's it. And you can hit load, and that's it. All right, guys. So, um, wow, I I guess I covered everything in this video. If this video was helpful for you, I hope it was. I try my best to touch on every single point. If you have problems, go check out the troubleshooting video. Um, I'll, I'll, there's a lot of information in there on if you get error messages, what to do. Uh, but leave a like subscribe if you have any questions you need my help shoot a comment i'll get back to you guys as soon as i can and happy flying guys get out there and fly some silverware on your tiny loops peace